Hey guys and welcome to episode 5. I think it's 5. If it's not, just ignore me because you're probably on the right video. Um, <clears throat> okay, so as you can see we've done a, uh, a few bits of level, so let's go ahead and carry on exactly where we left off. And let's go ahead and create our under the bed chest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now with this chest we're going to make it so that you can open it. So we're going to have to um, actually build build the inside so that it can like open. So we're going to have to like make the lid separate and yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. It's like a cool little project here. That's too long, too big. So our chest, uh, say like here. Reckon. Now we don't want to get the measurements or the rotation exact because we need it to look organic. I mean, this is this isn't going to be a fixed chest, so it's, it's it has to look like somebody placed it there. So now that we have the width and everything, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate and move up for now. Actually, let's move it away from the bed. Now that we have our dimensions, we actually need it under the bed straight away. Okay, so the top one will be the lid. So we'll thin that out a little bit to about there. And now that we have that going, we want to go ahead and select the inner face and just extrude, move it up a little bit, move it in a little bit, and then extrude again and move it up. Now that's going to be the ledge that the lid will sit into. So. We're going to go ahead and select the bottom face. We're going to do the same, except we're going to do it going the other way. So we're going to go up. No, no, it's going the same way. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Ignore me. And there we go. And then if I extrude it up a little bit more, as you can see, that will fit on there nicely. Just like inside that little ledge. Yep. <laughs> Attention to detail, right? Okay, so now we have to make the inside. I'm going to go ahead and extrude straight away, hit the scale tool, and I'm just going to scale down a little bit. Okay, not so much that axis. No, 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 what are you doing? There we go. And then I'm going to extrude again and go down. All the way to the bottom. Now you can see we have an actual container. All right? Okay, so let's back up a little bit more. Give it some base. And there is a container. Now, what I was just thinking, I'm going to scale this down so it's about there. We're going to stick the, a gun in here. We're going to make it so you can place a gun inside this container. So, <clears throat> we're going to, we want this container to be able to open under the bed. So if I move the lid back down on top, I'm going to scale the lid down maybe a little bit more as well. Okay, so there's the lid. Now we want the lid to be able to literally just open, right? Which is probably what you guys are thinking I'm going to do anyway. But I didn't, so I fooled you. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm doing it. <laughs> and yeah, so that, there we go. That should that should be able to fit. And we will code that in the game to open stuff. Right now, that's all we need. <laughs> need that under the bed. So that chest will do for now. We'll uh, add to it later, uh, but that's later. So let's go ahead and add another cube. We'll quickly make our mattress. Make sure it fits in nicely and looks all comfy because you know you're going to be sleeping on it and doing other stuff. That I'm not going to mention. Right, okay. Plug this in here. Make sure that we get it right, get the scale right. Make sure it fits in part. That's a bit. Uh, Yeah, there we go, that'll be. I'm gonna extrude, oh, hold on. Extrude this face, literally just a little bit. I'm gonna move it in, and extrude again, a little bit. I'm gonna move it in, and then once again, extrude a little bit, 
and move it in. Not so much. That'll give it sort of like a bevel feel, like a mattress should be. However, we've done it ourselves, so we controlled how many faces it used, which is good because remember we were going on about optimizing and everything. So let me quickly drag this mattress out. We want it to not look so cubey, so I'm going to select the outside faces. I'm going to extrude about that much. Might be thinking, Jesus, that's not a bed. <laughs> That's just some weird spacecraft, and then I'm just gonna like shape it in a little bit, bring that in a little bit. And you can see it's added like, um, hard to explain, but just another face, and it just looks a little bit more smoother. And so yeah, now we're gonna now we're gonna move that back, plug it back into the bed, all nice, safe and sound. Actually, wait, 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 <laughs> we still gotta delete this bottom face. Click and delete. And then we'll go place that back in. I know it's only one face, but we've had this one So we'll go ahead and drag that in so it fits. Fits against them. Yeah, got a cute little bed. Spaceship. Now we can use bump maps and stuff to uh, make it look like a proper bed later on. Uh, but for now we're going to save the faces and we're going to leave that to the bump maps and stuff to bring that bed to life. Which we will do later on because I don't like using a lot of faces because I'm used to having... Um, before I got this computer, I had a really bad computer. And when I couldn't play a game properly, I got really sad and emotional. And I, not as bad as it sounds, but <laughs> I used to get really pissed off, basically. So I like to make things as optimized as I can now, and I still have an old PC which I tend to use for testing. And I have a laptop with a 1.6 GHz processor, dual core, and that is perfect for testing because as you guys know that is not the best. Um, with this, okay. out there. Just making a shelf. we will be going over. Um, we want to have a table in the middle here, so we're going to go ahead and create a spacey type table kind of thing. I'll try to go as spacey as I can, but I'm not promising anything. Uh, I mean, my mind is quite creative, but that's only when it really wants to be. And uh, I, did, I did eat before making this episode, so who knows, it might be really creative today. I'm going to go ahead and drag these out and make sure that I delete their faces. That did not work. Delete that face. Delete that face. Delete that face. That one. Oh. I know it's probably going to get annoying that you have to delete all these faces, but trust me, in the end, it'll be worth it. So now I'm just going to drag these back in, like so, just delete these bottom faces. Make to object mode, put them back in place, like so. There we go, now I'm just carry on with this table. I think I made that too high poly, yeah we can... Mm, no, we'll stick with how it is, that's fine. 
So let's go ahead and select the bottom faces and just make it look more integrated into the ground rather than just a cylinder poking into the ground. Delete the bottom faces and we'll move this down into the ground like so. Bingo. Now I would say delete these top faces but I'm thinking about having a glass top. So the player is going to see them faces. So that's not a good idea. Should we have a glass top? And yeah, we can... Uh, we'll have a glass top, that's fine. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and create another cylinder. We'll give that 14 as well. And then just size it down appropriately. Make sure it's in the center. So we're just going to copy the transform over. And we're going to go ahead and copy all this. Oh well. We didn't really need these. I think I said that last time. <laughs> and paste that all in there. So now that's literally in the center. As you can see. So we got a perfect little table to jump on. Um, we're just going to add a little bit more to this table. So I'm going to change the view. It doesn't really matter what you do, just as long as you can select. So, you know, what we've been doing this whole time, just so we can only get, no, we only want the side faces, so, like so. so I'm going to extrude, extrude them out a little, oh. extrude them out a little, there's a scale tool, and I'm going to make them a little bit better, slightly thinner, so that's like a space table, like so, just so you know, give it a little bit of a better edge. That's the uh, table right now. now I'm going to quickly grab these top faces. And I'm just going to make it look like it's part of the table. Just like I've done with the floor. Like so. And I'm actually going to delete them faces because it's just, just not going to be a glass top. We'll, we'll work something out. So let's go to mesh and combine. Hit insert again. And we will move just like we always have. I'll we'll just quickly go up to it. As you can see, there's a lot of repetitiveness when making a level. And it actually takes quite a while, but you'll see once we've finished, the end product will make all of this optimization and everything like that. Because it'll work perfectly and it should, if everything goes well, look nice. Now we've got a table. Start pivot. And everything I'm making now kind of has like a generic feel to it. So really you can use this table in any sort of game you want. So really we're not just making it for this specific game. You can use it in anything. Because personally I think this will fit in in most games, because this table is just like an average table, you can put it in a posh restaurant or something. But now I need to make a chair. So what kind of chair would we have? Would we have a wooden chair? Or would we have a metal base sort of chair? No, we'll, we'll make one that suits, that suits the table. So let's go ahead and grab our cylinder. Change that to 14 once again, which seems to be my default for cylinders that needs to look smooth. Um, we will go ahead and delete the bottom, just like usual. Go ahead, delete, go into object, and we'll scale that down and move that down into the ground. And maybe scale up a little bit, scale it down a bit. And then go ahead and hit the face, and just like before, just gonna select the top, hold shift straight through the middle, just so that we literally just have the top selected, and we're going to go ahead and extrude, and then we're going to make our own little chair, like so, that's a thick for a chair, that's a thick for a chair, so we're just going to go over there, and go up, just go up, like so, Oh, 
we go, that's a sort of like cafe chair. So I'm going to go ahead and select edge. I'm going to double click on that edge, which will select the whole thing. And I'm just going to move that down a bit. So, object mode. As you can see it scales a little bit off. So I'm just going to scale that down a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab these faces here. Scale that up a bit. We need all them pages. Basically, now we're just going to play around with the scale just to get it to look normal. Like so. Duplicate. Get to the side. Duplicate. Get to the side. Just make it look organic as if someone's just placed it. We're going to put these under the table there. You know, save space. And because it looks like we've literally randomly placed it, it looks like somebody's randomly put it there, so that looks kind of organic too. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Got our bed, got our table, got our little bookshelf over there in the corner. Um, what was next? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm going to delete that wall light because I'm actually going to add to it. I didn't feel like it matched the amount of effort we were putting into things, so I'm going to quickly add a bowl inside. So, like so, just like normal. Oh wait, no, Control Z that. I want to change that to 6 because the player's not really going to look at it and when they do, chances are it's going to be on. Which means it'll be bright and they won't see the faces anyway. So, I'm going to go ahead and scale that all the way down. Enlarge that. Let's bring it up to the light. Because we want to see that inside, right? Because that's where it's meant to be. Like so. Let me quickly zoom in. Now we're just going to scale it down and say that width is fine. Just the actual light itself. That. Maybe. I'm scroll that inside. So. I'm go ahead and grab faces. Okay, we're gonna need to go into the wireframe and do exactly what we've done with the other light. We have to make sure that in that doesn't pierce the edges. We could be zooming in here. You can see that's not coming out the bottom. So let's see what I can. Here, this is where we have to look out. This will need to be rotated that way and that way. Want to be like part of that face, and uh, we'll drag them back inside. There you go. And just like before, hit delete because we don't need them faces anymore. And the same goes for this one. So we'll drag that out. Hit the rotation tool. That's pretty much what we want. We'll drag it back in so it's hidden. You should see, hit delete because we don't want them faces. Now we have a bowl. So I'm going to go back to object and drag that up a little bit more. As you can see now it's piercing again, but because we deleted those faces, we're going to have to change our game. We're going to go to oh, wrong object. We're going to go to edges instead, like the edges, and practically it's exactly the same. So we're just going to move it in a bit, use that, and go inside. Same goes for this. Let me bring that inside a little bit. There we go. That'll do. To object mode, and there we go. We have our little light. I know it's not a big change, but every little helps, right? Every little helps. Now, um, I'm going to go over optimizing the lights in a minute, which will take some redoing. But for now, that's the end of this episode, and I will see you in the next one.